I'm Cave Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comics and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Green Arrow issue number four. Black Canary and Oliver Queen's sister have all been taken captive by the Burned Man. Can he get them back? Will he work with the police to do it? I don't know. Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Alright, so picking up from where we last left off, Oliver Queen was staring down the barrels of the police. Apparently, Seattle PD can't tell the difference between the villains who have been assaulting their city and the hero who's been protecting them this whole time. GA manages to give the cops the slip, and he ends up coming face to face with the last person he expected, that being Diggle. Diggle, as we've seen in the previous issues, has been waging a one-man revenge war against those that he felt was responsible for Oliver Queen's death. Now that he's back in town and realizes that Oliver isn't dead, he he's just a little ticked off. The book also plants some seeds for some future storylines. Apparently, Diggle only left Seattle and Green Arrow's side because something terrible happened to a woman that he loved and Ollie was responsible. Hmm, is she dead or did Ollie just bang her? Knowing him, it could be either. The two fight for a bit, but eventually decide that they have bigger fish to fry, so they join forces. Now, over with Black Canary, she managed to stow away aboard the Inferno, the ship that the Burned Man and the Ninth Circle are running their operation out of. Imiko reveals herself to Black Canary, and the two have some very harsh words for one another. This is an amazing Canary panel, by the way. Hats off to Ferreira. He is just killing it on this book, and I felt I needed to say that because I messed up his name in the last issue. Sorry for that. Canary gets herself taken hostage, but this means we get to look at the inner sanctum of the burned men, something they call the baptismal, which is just a big, giant, scolding pot filled with lies. It seems that all the slaves they've been getting from the underground men get put here, have their skin burnt off, their identities taken away and their minds rewritten to become the official foot soldiers of the supervillain bank known as the Ninth Circle. Whoa, that is pretty freaking hardcore, and I don't just mean because this room looks like a heavy metal album cover, but it totally does. Diggle and Ollie, having put their differences aside, decide to go and pay a visit to Fife, strong-arming him to help them out, even though he doesn't exactly want to. Oh, he thought he was done with superhero madness, but just when he thinks he's out, they pull him right back on in. Fife, using his technological expertise, is able to crack open the laptop that Green Arrow took from Broderick last issue. Through this, he's able to discover Queen Industries' relationship with the Burned Men in the Ninth Circle. It seems that the company under Oliver's nose this whole time has actually been supplying weapons and equipment to the group. Getting into the laptop, it would seem, is actually something of a two-way street because Dante relays a message to Green Arrow through the computer, saying that if he ever wants to see his girlfriend and his sister alive again, he'll hand over all the evidence he has to them. This is obviously a trap to anyone with more than two brain cells, and because Fife more or less ruined the laptop trying to break into it, they no longer have any leverage. This means the heroes are going to have to go in all commando style under the cover of night to get back their people. Green Arrow number four was another solid issue backed up with clever writing and eye-poppingly beautiful artwork. I mean, sure, I had some minor complaints. Once again, and I know I complain about this every week, but I swear Diggle's story would have so much more impact on me if it was actually Roy. I mean, seriously, you could just change it to Roy and nothing would be different. This this issue also moves at a considerably slower pace than the last ones. This is clearly the penultimate issue, and they had to get all their ducks in a row for what I'm sure will be a great finale, but I felt it drag a bit. Overall, it's still a really good issue, though, and a really great series, and one that's definitely worth your time. Overall, I would give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer? Or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.